Mark Collett invites me to his home. He wants to talk about leaflets. I want to talk about immigration. This is an age of caution, man. They've lived here since the 1950s. They've been... They've paid tax all their life. They've worked hard. They've never screwed anyone over. You know, they've got, they've got an English accent. They, they speak English. You know, they've... You know, they've done, up, they've done everything that you would expect a normal British person to do and played the game. And then, wh why would anyone have a problem with that? The people you've got a problem This is the man who I'd earlier heard tell a meeting that Britain is being destroyed by immigration, so I'm surprised by his change in tone. I learn later from Andy that he too suspects me. Another meeting, another pub. Tonight, Nick Cass, who's standing as a candidate in the European elections, represents the more modern, respectable face of the BNP. People don't vote in this country, not because they're satisfied with what's going on, because they don't feel that they've got another option. We've got to show them that we're capable of being that other option. And the only way of doing that is by getting on the doorstep, talking to these people, making them aware that we're not what the media says we're like. We're not thugs. We're not this, we're not that. We're just normal British people who care about what's going on in this country <coughs> and want to put things right. But when Mark Collett takes the podium, his speech is anything but respectable. I hear nothing of his apparent approval of hard-working immigrants, only insults and wild exaggeration. Hundreds of thousands of these Muslim asylum seekers are coming to this country every year. And they're adding to their ranks. They're building their supplies and they're working against us. And we're bringing these people into the country. And when they come here, what do they get? Well, they get a house get for a start. They get their rent, their raise, everything paid for. They get four grand checks to go and buy a car. Isn't it unacceptable to make these people use buses? They come into this country, they can't speak English, so rather than making them struggle on the buses or a taxi, we'll give them a car. And there'll be some people who read what I was saying tonight, and they'd say, Mark, you're full of hate. And I'd turn around to them and say, yeah, I am. I honestly don't hate asylum seekers. These people are cockroaches and they're doing what cockroaches do. Because cockroaches can't help what they do, they just do it. Like cats meow and dogs bark. They do it because they hold they are and they'll do what they do. The people I hate are the white politicians that have sold us down the line. <laughs> We'll have a hundred people on the street that night, and we won't be outnumbered this year, and we're not going to be pushed around. That's oh. some yeah. People who are very conscious of the fact that there are laws to prevent uh, incitement to racial hatred uh, are very conscious of the fact that. Uh, to, to correct yourself is to say, I don't hate these people, I just don't like the people who've actually uh, made it possible for them to come here. Uh, I don't see how we can be calling people cockroaches uh, and seeking to talk about uh, them in such ways if we're not intending uh, on promoting racial hatred. And I think it's a very uh, unsophisticated way of trying to exonerate yourself from likely prosecution. The barrister advising us agrees. He says Collett's words are clearly threatening, abusive or insulting. It is impossible on any objective assessment of his words to conclude that he was doing anything other than intending to stir up racial hatred. I watch Collett's speech with Steve Barkham. I feel he's stirred up. He's also more comfortable with me because he believes my story that I'm a football hooligan. I believe he now trusts me enough to tell me the truth about what really happened on the afternoon of the Bradford riots. I checked out his story. 
These police photos confirm that he's present at a Bradford pub with some members of the National Front. He's in confrontational mood. An Asian man runs towards the pub and is attacked. Three white men and the victim were later convicted of a fray. Barkham escaped prosecution. I assaulted him. Right, that was a fucking thing. I assaulted him. Okay, I knocked him out with a black bunch. I gave him a good fucking head because because that's what he asked for. And he got it. It might not have been me, it might, might have been you or you, it might be somebody else, but he, he, he came in there and he was arguing he wanted to fight with the white lads. White lads ran outside and they all fucking scarfed, most of them scarfed. Mm -hmm. Few left, few of us, few left, and let them have a fucking do it. So we had a fight, I had a fight. Six, six months later, I'm on fucking bail. And he's getting shown pho photographs of us, me and me and my mates, my and my lads, who beat you up, man, who beat you up. And he picked up some, some, somebody else by accident. And it was me who actually did it to him, but he couldn't fucking remember. He picked out somebody else. Um, yeah. Four days later, I'm back on the campaign trail with Barkham. What he tells me now is even more alarming. Oh, I've only ordered the old anarchist fucking cookbook on the internet. Have you? How to make explosives. Let's add him with that. I'll be fucking doing that soon, mate, I tell you. Regardless. <laughs> You're a fucking fool, but you are like fucking them. 22 pound it is. 22 pound. How to make fucking homemade explosives. Let's have some. Custard dusting. Custard what? It's a custard dusting. Oh, yeah. Right. Fucking mimic through like water and that, you know what I mean? Custard. Uh, that's fucking explosive. Is it really? I never knew it was. <laughs> Until I started reading about that sort of thing. You throw it in the air, you put a light to it, and it fucking blows up. Fucking hell. Yeah. Fucking propane gas. Isn't that? Propane gas? Yeah. Fucking what what, what, what kind of explosion can you get from that? Propane's fucking awesome, isn't it? Jesus. Fucking hell. Yeah. Fucking hell. How many of our brown brothers are you? I'm not, I'm one of two. Makes me wonder, you know, sometimes it's I think about whether democracy is the right way to do things. It's fucking bollocks. But do it, don't you? Yeah. I'm ready for a fucking war, though, man. Get yourself there. Had a bit of a scare today. Uh, I received a call um, about an hour before I was about to go out to a meeting. Uh, from my boss, and my boss told me that um, a colleague of mine at the BBC had received a telephone call. Um, someone claimed they were from the British National Party and that they knew there was an infiltrator from the BBC. I was obviously concerned that um, I could be walking into a setup. This is Keith, mate. Deliverance.